Jan Bratz, the Nutcracker. Sounds like Christmas. Smells like Christmas. It is Christmas. Mary laughed. Thumps and bumps and jingling bells. I'm ready. Whooped her brother Fritz. The doors opened into a magical Christmas party. But Mary never could have guessed how magical. Not far away, Uncle Drosselmeyer was gathering the curious creations he had fashioned for Christmas Eve. Uncle Drosselmeyer wheeled in the mysterious boxes. Inside were a trickster and two harlequins. With a turn of his key, a whirr, whirr, and a hum, 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 they danced. The figures were so lifelike, everyone wanted to join the fun and dance along. But Mary was enthralled by the nutcracker her uncle had placed under the tree. He looks like a real boy, she mused, who has traveled from a place far away. The party goers danced the grand march and the quadrille and applauded the beautiful music. Uncle Drosselmeyer arrived at Mary's side. He placed a hazelnut in the nutcracker's mouth. Crack! Out came a perfect nut. Mary beamed. What a surprising fellow he is, she thought. It was late when Mary's mother pleaded with her to say goodnight to the guests. But Mary would not leave the nutcracker. Fritz, wanting to see how he worked, had broken the nutcracker, and Mary was helping him get better. When the house was silent, Mary lay awake in her bed. I better check on the nutcracker, she thought. She tiptoed past uncle's old carved clock with the watchful owl on top. In the eerie light, Mary felt awed. As the old clock chimed twelve, she seemed to be getting smaller, for everything around her was growing bigger. Strange sounds were coming from inside the walls. Scritchy, scratchy, squeak. Scritchy, scratchy, squeak. Then Mary saw a mouse as bold as brass, who wore a glittery crown. Slowly, the old gilded cabinet holding uncle's wonderful gifts from times past creaked open. The figures inside moved as if waking up, and Mary heard the sounds of mice gathering at her back. Fritz's toy soldiers were mustering forces. Then a strong, clear voice called, We will not stand for any mouse invasion or their wicked king. It was the Nutcracker, now a boy on his feet and on the move. It was a ferocious battle. The Nutcracker jumped into the thick of it. Crack! The soldiers marched and the mice pounced. Then the Mouse King leaped upon the Nutcracker. Brave Mary reached for her slipper, took exacting aim and toppled the wicked Mouse King in one blow. The Nutcracker was saved. The battle was won and the wicked Mouse King was vanquished. The soldiers formed a hero's arch for Mary and the Nutcracker. At the end of the arch, Mary whispered, What is this? For inside the cabinet, the door to the gingerbread house was open. A sleigh was waiting for them and Mary and the Nutcracker stepped in. A wintry figure beckoned them forward as she danced among the snowflakes. 
The sleigh glided through a dreamland of icicles until they heard lively music. Molto vivas, playing. Dancing bears performed the Russian trepak. All thoughts of the battle and the mouse king disappeared as the music reached their ears, then their hearts, and down to their very toes. They leaped higher and higher until the one with a twinkle in his eye lifted Mary skyward before gently placing her into the sleigh. Next, they were gliding through a birch copse. The wintry lady escorted them to a sparkling clearing where two elegant foxes performed the Danse Arabe, their foxtails entwining. Mary, standing on her toes, imagined the handsome fox spinning her as a part of the dance. When the foxes bowed toward the lady and the nutcracker applauded, Mary exclaimed, She must be the princess of this snowy land. As the sleigh followed the snow princess, the treetops suddenly exploded. A large creature greened through them, sprinkling the woodland with dazzling snow crystals. The dragon's breath was harumphing out in song. Humph, 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 humph. With great fanfare, two flying squirrels leaped off its back and invited Mary and the Nutcracker for a cup of tea from their samovar. As the sky grew the color of a sugar plum and the snow became many shades of blue, hundreds of tiny flames appeared and lanterns illuminated the path. Antlered friends playing flutes led them toward a gingerbread house. The nutcracker smiled at Mary, his eyes happy and sad at the same time, like the music. Are we heading back home already? asked Mary. Not quite yet, whispered the snow princess. They peeked through the gingerbread windows at bouquets of spring flowers souping and twirling to a waltz, but they also saw bustling prickles. I thought hedgehogs slept through the winter. Mary laughed. You just have to find their gingerbread palace to see them, answered the nutcracker. The snow princess smiled. We have an even bigger treat ready for you. The gingerbread doors opened. The animal orchestra performed the waltz of the flowers. Candy cane elves and fairies danced for the nutcracker to celebrate his bravery in standing up to the wicked mice. Mother Ginger and her chicks thanked Mary for throwing the slipper that changed the course of the battle. The Celesta's twinkling notes and the whirling dancing made Mary's imagination take flight for what seemed like hours. As her eyelids and the nutcrackers grew heavy, the doors to the old cabinet creaked open and beckoned them back to Mary's home. The next day, Mary was happy to wake up to her mother's loving face and Fritz's mischievous smile. Her nutcracker was by her side, and almost everything was as before. But from that day forward, even when she was grown, if she heard the notes of the Celesta, she felt she and the Nutcracker were back in the land of Snow Princess once more. The End